Hi guys, my name is Meads. This is going to be a review for SH Fjords and we have Bowser or the King Koopa. And it's one of those that got me intrigued and I do like the figure arts Mario. They're pretty fun figures to have and uh, they do relieve your nostalgia. The good old days when you play Mario and when they've uh, announced that they're gonna make Bowser, I got excited. I got my from Pato Hobby. I'll provide the link down below if you are interested. Here's the box art here. It's one thing that about Figure Arts uh, Mario is that their box is has that cheap look to it. It's not that uh, vibrant or doesn't have that gloss look into it as other Figure Arts have. Yeah, it just got that kind of regular cardstock uh, box. But you know, nonetheless, you know it works. Uh, what's important is what's inside. And uh, judging from this, it uh, seems like we're getting some uh, effect parts here. Alternate the uh, hands and a base. Quite nifty. Alright, so enough of that box. Let's take a look inside. Alright, so uh, in terms of height, Bowser stands about 4.5 inch. Or roughly around there, maybe a bit less. So he's not that big. And compared to Mario, they're about almost the same height. More or less, but you know, he got like a hat here, and eh. <laughs> I don't know if that constitutes as part of the whole overall height of Mario. But yeah, um, I kind of played around with it a bit, and from what I can see, it's actually a fairly good uh, figure. It's solid, uh, doesn't really have much articulation, and uh, pretty much once we look at this, we have the neck here. It's actually kind of interesting how it's put in and I'm just gonna do this just for the heck of it <laughs> just to see what's inside you have this kind of flexible joint here it's kind of odd why they have it in that certain angle but something tells me if you ever want to pop this out and I don't know swap it out or maybe the way it's a certain angle it is not centered like the neck uh, connection there so maybe when you uh, tilt this more on the back side, it's kind of hard to do it here since it's, there's nothing to hold this. But yeah, maybe it's the reason why it's angled like so. Interesting. Anyways, I'm gonna pop this back in there. So we have that uh, neck articulation. Uh, he can look up, look down a little bit, and side to side. Other than the rest of uh, his face, nothing really moves. I mean, there is a swappable uh, jaw, which we'll do in a bit, but uh, that's it. Uh, in terms of uh, the molding, it's quite great. Uh, and uh, as well as the paint app, get that uh, smooth for the face. Then on the skin here, you have that, that textured look, and that scales. And uh, even the hair here, you got the. There's actually the, like the lines going through. It's a really nice sculpt. And I look in the back here, we got the shell. You got the details there. Quite nice. I like that. And uh, this part is it's a bit soft. So it's not really sharp, which is great. He does have some weight on him too. Then moving on, we have the arm here, which I'm trying to see how it is connected. Huh. It seems like it's uh, two pieces connected on like a joint like this. So I'm not sure how good of a connection that is. It might break. But there is like that swivel part there. It's kind of hard to see. And I think it's a ball joint there too. So it does give you a fairly good uh, articulation. And there is no knee bend here. I don't really think he needs one. It'll be nice if they do, but uh, this one gives it a more of a smooth a transition. So there's always that trade-off whether you get articulation or you have a better looking figure. Same thing here on the bottom of the legs. You get, you just have the, uh, what do you call this, the leg to the waist uh, movement. And you have your ankle here, which just gives you a swivel. Actually, huh? It's actually a ball joint. Okay, <laughs> so a little bit more than a swivel. You can have it in a certain angle. 
But yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, tail is fixed. Not that you need it, but uh, but it's great that it gives you a, a support for the back. And uh, let's do some uh, swaps. So for the jaw, we have uh, two other ones. And uh, pretty much for the gimmick, you have the open jaw here without the flame and with the flame. And it's great that they give you two separate pieces because something tells me they could have just created or swapped this uh, tongue here. But that's going to be just too much of changing and that, not, that may not be a secure connection like this one. It's, I believe they glued that in place. Right, so uh, we're just going to pop the jaw here. It's on that uh, peg. Let's put this on here. So this is the first one. Got that, that open mouth. Now, some of you might think, why not just give him the hinge jaw? That might have been better. But, uh, looking at this, again, it's more of a secure to just have something like this. And it pegs in as opposed to putting in the fire part of the mount. And that will involve adding another uh, action base to support that. So I think this is uh, fine, just the way it is. Swappable jaw. And there we go. We got the fiery breath or blast. You know what? I kind of want to have a chibi Godzilla figure if Bande ever makes it. It'd be cool. I mean, you know, something this small, having that effect part, swappable jaw, I think it could work. Yeah, yeah, that that'll be great if they ever decide to make a TV figure of the Godzilla. I don't know, call it uh, SH Monster Hearts or something with an SD <laughs> on it. That'll be cool. Um, I, other than that, I think that's uh, pretty much it for uh, this. I'm gonna just swap this back here. The one with the open mouth. Yeah, it's it's a decent uh, figure. And oh, almost forgot there's more. Uh, the hands. So, this is just uh, more of the relaxed hands here. Then uh, you have one that's more of a open hand here. Not sure what he can do with this. Maybe if he can reach Mario. So, it's a straight bag, which is great. Just swap that out to put this in. There we go. Well, it'll be cool if we have a. Uh, something for him to hold. <laughs> Maybe a shell. Yeah, really nice. And I think there's one more. There's one more thing I want to show you. And here we go. We have the World of Nintendo Bowser. And first off, I would like to thank a good friend of mine, Vectar. You might have heard of him from my previous uh, videos. He helps me out get domestic toys. Uh, on his area, they he has a toy store uh, called Toys R Us. Uh, it, they used to have it here in my area, but they kind of moved out, or I guess they're just not doing well during the, the recession. And I, we st I still have a, a toy store here. It's more like a grocery, I uh, call it Target. And there's an aisle for toys. Uh, I don't think there's any. Uh, nearby Walmart. Walmart is like a huge uh, grocery store where you buy things in bulk, kind of like a Costco too. If you're in US, you probably know what I'm talking about, or more uh, specifically if you live in the West Coast. But anyways, <laughs> that's that. But again, I'd like to thank a good friend of mine, Vector, for helping me get the Bowser. So Bowser is huge. It's six inch compared to the four and a half inch figure arts here. And uh, it's massive, uh, and it works quite well with the figure arts Mario, uh, in my opinion. Now, let's do some, uh, well, might as well review the World of Nintendo uh, Bowser <laughs> while we're at it. So, here we go. So, he's huge, quite nice, although there are some limitations to him. Uh, starting on the head here, <laughs> he has that goofy look on his uh, face. 
when you look, compare it to the figure arts, the figure arts, the people are closer to the nose. He looks more menacing. This one, he kind of just looks straight. And he has that, huh, look on his face. Like, it, questionable. <laughs> it's not that menacing. I guess if you, if they painted the eyes a bit closer, yeah. But I guess they don't want to really scare the kids. I, th I think this figure here is more more uh, pertain to kids as opposed to the figure arts. Figure arts is more for the an older collector base. I, although uh, you could argue that it's figure arts, it, it's for everyone, basically. <laughs> Anyways, so that's that. And the neck does not move on this one. Uh, the hair here seems to be fused on the back of the shell. Yeah, there's no neck articulation, and for some odd reason, I have a mess up on mine. There seems to be like a glue here, or some paint pulling. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I cannot do anything about that. It's not too bad. I mean, from afar, I can have it on this uh, view here. That's that. And nothing, yeah, on the head part, nothing you can, uh, you can move. So moving on, on the arm here. The arm doesn't really give you much movement. You just get that swivel movement here. Same thing on this side. And even then, this is a certain angle. Like this one, it's parallel to the ground. This one is slightly angled. Yeah. You do have that elbow articulation, but it kind of breaks away from... You know, when you see that uh, joint there... It looks like more of a toy as opposed to this. I mean, it is a toy, but there's some kind of realism. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain what I'm trying to get to, but it's nice if there is no joint like this. And uh, there is always that trade off again, whether you give articulation or have more of an aesthetic look or more pleasing look to it. Uh, this doesn't really do much. I mean, you can move it at a certain angle like that, and that's it. For the wrist, this one has a little bit of the wiggle. You see the hinge there? Not much. And it does not even rotate, so that's that. Now uh, you have your legs here, and I think that's pretty much what you can do with them. There's no ankle, but there is a tail movement here. But again, like I mentioned, it's more for... Uh, a way for him to stand properly so it doesn't really matter much if you can move this or not so overall articulation on this big guy is a bit limited I still prefer the figure arts plus yeah you have the fiery effect part and stuff like that <laughs> and now let's talk about the price point uh, I was looking online and trying to find World of Nintendo Bowser it's kind of hard since I'm not sure when it got released and over time the, the market does go up. So uh, from what I can tell it is priced at 35 bucks. That was when it was released. You can find it in clearance and if you're lucky enough and I think uh, Vect, I can't remember if he told me that he got this for clearance. But uh, if it wasn't clearance we probably can get it for 20 bucks. That's quite cheap. Now the figure arts, you're going to be looking at around $55 or more. $55, $60, yeah, considering shipping. So let's just say $35 to $55, $20 uh, difference. And you're getting a bigger figure here. And if you just want something uh, for a pick quick picture or diorama, you might want to go with something big. And right now... <laughs> I would say the World of Nintendo is a good uh, substitute if you don't want to go for the figure arts. But on the other hand, I re I really like this figure arts here. Uh, this is uh, n nicely done. Um, yeah, I've been liking the figure arts for Mario. Uh, it's from the start. Uh, it's it's good. I mean, it, there's certain articulations on or that are limited, but the way it's made. It, the aesthetic look on it is great and it, it does what it's supposed to and Bowser does that as well this is in comparison to Pokemon 
I have yet to see a working figure arts uh, or D arts. Actually, the D arts wasn't bad, but it doesn't really give me gave me a good impression uh, with the Blastoise, Charizard, Venusaur. They have their own issues, and F Pikachu, the Pikachu. Oh man. <laughs> Uh, well, we'll see. Um, who knows? They're gonna make more figure arts Pokemon. Hopefully, that got they get better. Who knows? But anyways, that's about it for this review. Hopefully, you like it. And uh, if you have questions, uh, let me know. But that's about it for this. So until then, this is Meads. Thanks for watching.